In their 2016 10-year plan, it says in boldface, in the executive summary, Florida needs no new electricity until 2024. FBL has admitted this pipeline is not needed. Um, so that's one thing you probably haven't heard about. Another thing is, um, okay, Florida is a sunshine state. In this country last year, more new electricity came from solar power than any other source, more than natural gas, more than even wind. It's the first time, it's not going to be the last time, because the price of solar power just keeps going down. It's now cheaper than any, any other source of power. It's far faster to deploy. You don't need a three-year permitting process like for that pipeline. You don't need eminent domain to take anybody's land. You don't have to put it in wetlands, all that sort of thing. And uh, solar power already employs more people than coal, oil, and natural gas combined. Now, these are the sorts of things that, you know, if you really follow this, it, it is in the news. But if you're not really following it, you, you're going to lose it amongst everything else. So there, there's really no need for the pipeline, even FBL admits it. Solar is faster, cheaper, far cleaner. So why is it being built? Profit. Profit for a pipeline company from Houston, profit for FBL as a utility with a guaranteed profit margin. But there's still a chance to stop it. A lawsuit, divestment, and at least those sorts of tactics may help there be fewer of these things built. Because you know, solar power is going to win. Just project forward, it's doubling the amount of solar power, the total deployed, but doubling every two years. At that rate, by 2023, more total electricity in this country will come from solar power than anything else. I'm not the only one making this prediction. 
John Wellinghoff, who was in 2013 chair of the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, the same organization that gave the Sable Trail federal eminent domain, FERC, as people call it, keeps track of amounts of energy coming from each energy source for the electric grid. And uh, John Wellinghoff made the same observation that I did because FERC's own numbers show solar is doubling every two years. We just project ahead that kind of growth. And by 10 years from now, by 2023, more total power in this country will come from solar than anything else. And it turns out we were conservative. It's actually growing faster than that. So these pipelines are the last gasp of the dying industry. Coal is already going belly up. The market cap of the coal companies in this country are 10% of what they were 10 years ago. Nuclear peaked at about 104 units and is going down. Not even Southern Company can stop that. Natural gas is going to be the next to fall, and the winners are going to be solar power and wind. And the handwriting is on the wall. So this, this pipeline is unnecessary. There's still a chance to stop it. And of course, what you can do is you can uh, you know, put some solar panels as well. Uh, Did you know about the USDA REAP grant, R-E-A-P? No? Nobody heard of that? Well, nobody heard of it apparently in, um, what year was that, 2012, we got ours? Because uh, we were one of only two small farms in Georgia to get REAP grants, apparently because we're about the only two that apply. <laughs> and we got 25% uh, grant towards our solar panels. And at that time, the federal 30% was still a grant. So that's a long way towards paying for 60 new solar panels. We now have 15 kilowatts on our farm roof. Most of you probably wouldn't need that many. But there's paths to get there. And in 2015, Georgia used to be one of five states that didn't allow third-party power purchase agreements. It's jargon, but basically it made it hard to finance solar. The law changed in 2015, so now there's only four. Florida is one of those four. But in November of last year, the people of Florida detected that fake solar amendment and voted it down, so it's clear what the people of Florida want. They want solar power. They don't want another dirty pipeline. So that's the quick summary, and uh, there are some things that you can do. Um, one other thing is there's a movement to try to get Congress to take eminent domain out of the Natural Gas Act. If that could happen, there wouldn't be any more of these interstate natural gas pipelines. It's a, you know, it's a long shot, but if you don't start, it'll never happen. So it's worth a try. Thank you for your attention. Thanks for coming down, and uh, we hope you like it.